One of the important chemists from the 1900s was a guy by the name of Walter Nernst. So it looks like this. Nernst. And the Nernst equation is very important in terms of thermodynamics. So um, he was a German scientist that was working on a lot of different things. Um, he's very important in, in the study of thermodynamics from both a chemistry and a physics standpoint. And he also worked with uh, one of my favorite historical chemists by the name of Gilbert Lewis. And I have a soft spot in my heart for Gilbert Lewis because he was nominated for the Nobel Prize 41 times and never won it. And the reason that he didn't win it was because of this guy right here, Walter Nernst. He actually worked with him in his lab um, as he was studying chemistry and kind of developing his own career and then he became quite critical of him um he talked about some of nernst's theories as being some of the most regrettable um episodes in the history of chemistry uh, which is pretty big talk actually coming from your research assistant um but he was becoming a scientist and a chemist in his own right so nernst was upset they had professional disagreements and one of Nernst's friends was on the Nobel Committee and essentially blocked uh, Gilbert Lewis's nominations uh, through the years. So um, <laughs> while Nernst is really important, um, I, I'm pro Gilbert Lewis, so um, I always have a little bit of a slight animosity towards Nernst. But the Nernst equation is really useful and important because it builds on this relationship between the cell potential, if we're thinking about redox reactions here, and the equilibrium constant. So we're thinking about the kind of thermodynamics, we're thinking about equilibrium, we're thinking about cell potentials. So if you recall, in uh, prior videos, the standard cell potential for a voltaic cell um, is equal to this quantity, which combines together a number of different constants R, for example, um, the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius converted to Kelvin, and uh, Faraday's constant are all wrapped into this. The N here is the number of moles of electrons transferred, and then this is the log of the equilibrium constant for the redox reaction. Um, but this is if we're at equilibrium, right? An equilibrium constant implies that we're at equilibrium. And we've talked about the cell potential as being at concentrations of ions at one mole. So when we're thinking about those standard reduction potentials that we can find on a list somewhere in either a textbook or online, then it's at 25 degrees Celsius and the concentration of the electrolyte solutions are one molar. But if we're not at these concentrations, then that means that we're not going to be at equilibrium. So the Nernst equation really gives us a way to relate these concentrations under non-equilibrium conditions to the cell potential. And so here's how it looks. The E sub cell, and again, I'm not going to put my standard degree symbol there, is equal to the standard potential. So this is as if it was with one molar concentrations of ions. And then we're going to subtract from it this quantity. Oops, missing a zero there. Zero, and two over n log. Instead of being at k, a k value, we're going to have a reaction quotient. So q, which we've seen before when we've looked at um, non-equilibrium concentrations of ions and tried to figure out kind of where we were in terms of our equilibrium expression. So here's our reaction quotient as a reminder. Quotient. And this is still going to be at 25 degrees Celsius. The 25 degrees Celsius is actually wrapped into this value here. So this is just at potentially non-equilibrium concentrations, which still has the same expression as K. This is our standard which we can tell with our degree symbol, which includes not only the temperature, but the concentration of the ions. And here's kind of at any sort of given moment. So we'll put at a given concentration of ions here. Okay, so this is the Nernst equation, this guy. And it's really useful then to say, well, where are we at in terms of our equilibrium? Um, and, and what then can the cell potential be if I don't have equilibrium 
quantities, because if I don't have those one molar quantities, then that's going to change my cell potential. It could potentially go down or it could go up, depending on kind of um, the information that we're getting. And that's useful for us to know because these cells are a way to um, provide a movement of electrons. And so if we can tune those in some way, if we can change those concentrations to make them the best, then um, then that's important information. Okay, so what's the cell potential of the following cell? Now you'll note for these types of problems that the concentration of the ions is going to be in parentheses after the ion itself. Looks like I'm missing my aqueous symbol there. So we can tell that the ions are the aqueous part um, in our electrolyte solution and those concentrations then are given. So with the actual reaction that's occurring, the equilibrium is going to be our zinc metal plus our silver ions, giving us our, sil our zinc ions and our silver metal. Now if we think about the movement of electrons, because for our Nernst equation here we're going to need the transfer of electrons. So we need to figure out what our n value is. And so to calculate our n value, we need to figure out how many moles of electrons are being transferred in this process. So zinc is going from zinc to zinc 2 plus, so it must be losing two electrons. Silver is going from a silver plus 1 to silver that's neutral, so it's gaining one electron. So I'm going to have to multiply my silver half reaction by 2 in order to balance out this chemical process so that I'm losing the same number of electrons that I'm gaining from my silver, and that gives me an N equal to 2 moles. And now if I think about the Q value, because that's the other part of my Nernst equation here, it's going to have the same expression as my K, so if this is my reaction, then my Q is going to be equal to the concentration of my products which the only thing I need to factor in are my zinc ions here because my silver is a pure solid, over the concentration of my reactants, which is my silver ions here. Now I do have a coefficient of 2 once I balance this out, so this is going to be that concentration squared. Now I'm given these concentrations, so I can plug those values in. I don't know why I wrote that all out. That's weird. Okay. And then that's going to give me some value. I got this. Let's turn the fourth. Okay. So I don't have a K value to compare this to, so that's not really useful right now, but it is going to be useful for plugging into our Nernst equation, because what I'm solving for is what this cell potential is at these given concentrations. So I'm given the E sub cell under standard conditions. So when I plug that into my Nernst equation here, give myself a little more space. Then that E sub cell is equal to my 1.56 volts minus this quantity. So we have the 0 0.0592 over my n value, which is that 2 moles of electrons, and then the log of my q value, which I calculated here, times 10 to the fourth. So when I plug all of this in, this number is pretty tiny, but it is going to make a difference in our potential cell. So this is something that I'm subtracting from the standard conditions because it's something that's non-ideal, essentially. So here's the ideal, here's the standard, here's something that's going to impact that. So my E sub cell from my Nernst equation here is 1.42 volts. Okay, so changing those concentrations is going to change the potential for that cell to do work. And again, the Nernst equation is a really useful expression for us to use in order to determine what that new work can be under these given conditions. And if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.